So we're going to Gaines's Mill. And uh, this is on double speed. The enemy is still at around 50,000, and that seems to be where the enemy is going to stay. They're forceful if we keep going after them. And um, we have 20 units that are in the front, and then 7 out of 10 come in um, the back um, as reinforcements. But it's all the men we have. So um, we were able to get everyone in. Now, this shows us where the directions the enemy is going to come from. So we're going to get a strong attack on our right. And that hill that uh, it shows at the end is the final objective, which must be held at all costs or we lose the battle. And we have to hold one of the two in the front. So the enemy is going to come in from this side of the map. And it's also going to come in kind of the direction we're facing, that road right in front of us. And I look at the terrain where there are good defensive lines. And there are a lot of good defensive lines here. Using river lines and wood lines, we can set up some really good lines. The one that, uh, place that I know is absolutely terrible um, is uh, the fortifications. Those are death traps. You will absolutely get your army killed for no purpose if you go in there. Uh, you will not even get one-to-one. -one. Uh, exchanges with the enemy. You will lose greater than one to one. So those are just a death trap, which is fine because I don't, you know, want to fight from those fortifications anyway. I want to fight a more mobile battle with a mobile reserve so I can counterattack and, and harm the enemy. By the way, this map should look really familiar. Um, this is a, what was it, river crossing? If you look at it, we had to attack from basically where uh, the general is sitting across the river and take both sides of the hill. And it was the one where, you know, I did the over-dramatization of the time running out for dramatic effect. So um, a, a neat little battle. But this time we're going to be on this side of the hill um, defending against an enemy that's coming at us. So I think the difference is that this is a real battle that happened in history. So uh, in the wood line that I'm going to occupy, um, well, first of all, you have, you have swamp. Never, ever, ever put your units in the swamp. Uh, their condition goes to zero almost instantly, and never, ever, ever go into the swamp. I mean, it's just a terrible thing to do to your units. If you've ever been in a swamp, um, you know that that's just a bad idea. Uh, and I think most people have never been in a swamp trying to move any distance at all, so they don't know how impossible it is, how difficult it is, how exhausting it is. Uh, it, it's a great way to get dead in real life, uh, trying to make a uh, move with any kind of speed in swamp or marshy areas. So um, the... There are positions along this line I'm about to take where in previous times I fought this battle, I was able to find, uh, I guess, really just the sweet spot where you get 160 cover. I never quite found it in this playthrough. Um, a lot of units, I kept fiddling with them, trying to get better cover, and it just, I, I never found the right spot. But, but there are positions in these in this wood line where if you if you get the units positioned just right they will all have tremendous cover um particularly the ones at the intersection of the two little creeks um uh, i there are some very good spots there and i never quite find them i never quite get in the right place also the the hilltop um, any enemy units charging if they have to charge up that very steep um, hill to the ridge line, they're, they're going to advance very slowly. Okay, so the enemy is, I, I easily got into position before the enemy showed up. One of the things I did was I didn't put any artillery in the first division, knowing full well that, you know, my, my first division was going to have to back up a considerable distance. So by putting it in the second division, my artillery is in a perfect position waiting on the enemy to come across the river. Uh, not moving across the river trying to, you know, get in position. So I'm detaching skirmishers to um, kind of keep this skirmisher busy.
and already he's going to give me an opportunity to pound one of his units. And this mobile reserve on the right, their job is to punish anybody who makes a mistake in this open area. And there's the first unit to make a mistake, and we're, we're going to punish him. And he gets punished pretty severely. But these are limited counterattacks. Um, a mobile defense with limited counterattacks. Uh, there's no intention that this is any kind of a big offensive. Oh, and I'm real happy with this uh, unit that wants to uh, stand in the water. That's terrific. Unfortunately, he doesn't do that very much. He gets in his wood line, and I sit in mine, and we just exchange volleys. Well, he has his flank exposed, so I'm going to punish this next guy. We can do that. These are our best units that I put on the flank, and I have my commander there, too. Um, these guys are going to be able to move fast and hit hard and then get out of there if I don't drive them to exhaustion. And, and the idea isn't um, to get in and do a lot of fighting. It's just hit the enemy hard, inflict a lot of losses, collapse the enemy, uh, damage his morale, maybe kill a general. That would be great. Um, and then get out of there. If I can catch it, a couple of volleys while he's either retreating or in the water, that's terrific. And we're in pretty good cover as we're doing the. Notice how it's like three or three to one. Uh, I put three volleys in one unit's flank. It collapses, takes a bunch of losses, and then routes. So that's about as good as that gets. So I've managed to rout a lot of his army. And at this point, I have, in other games, gone after him, trying to inflict losses. But um, in this game, I want to play a more patient game until later on. And then when everyone's going to go after the enemy and try to inflict as much damage as possible. It's a pretty big army, though. And um, we're not going to be able to get them all. So I hit fall back. And the guys uh, get out of firing range and then take off and uh, wait for the next opportunity. Yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to get all these guys in good cover. Okay, he's in, he's in good cover. But he's kind of taking up a lot of space. I'd like to have two units in there. I, I never quite get it right. It, um, the one time I did get it absolutely perfectly right, um, I'm telling you, it was an accident. So, okay, put those guys on uh, walk and get them back to the wood line in cover and wait for the next opportunity. Let them rest, hopefully, get some rest get their condition and their morale back, and get ready to uh, counterattack the enemy again. And at this point, I'm getting some skirmishers out. We've already been told the enemy is going to come from this right flank. So if I get some units over there and get some visibility, I can see where he is and what he's doing. The thing about this battle is we have... I think seven units that are green, and the, the Confederacy doesn't have any green raw recruit units. They all have one star. So I'm going to have a bunch of units that are green that are going to face a very large uh, core, well, a couple divisions of uh, experienced troops with good weapons. And my troops are going to have rebors, and his troops are going to have Lorenzes. It's going to turn out. So... Uh, and my troops are going to have efficiency of 11, 10, 11, and his are going to be one-star units, which could mean, I don't know, anything from 20 to 
45 so, and, and some two-star units too so um, I'm gonna show you how you do that you have to be very careful you can your units are not going to be as good as the 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 enemies the enemy units are just going to be better they're gonna move faster they're gonna hit harder they're gonna fire faster they're going to hold up better in hand-to-hand -hand fighting um, you can't fight them one-on-one -on -one and toe-to-toe. -to -toe. You can't do it. You, you have to gang up on enemy units, uh, and you have to use artillery and cav uh, to hit them. Once you break them, then even your scruffy little units can, can fight them. But you're still going to do, probably with most of your green units, uh, casualties that are like one-to-one. -one. Oh, and here come more of the enemy. The enemy's pouring into the battlefield. So. Yeah, the the red bar is about to get bigger. The red part of the bar up on the top of the screen is about to get big. So, oh good, he's he's going to attack my artillery and turn his flank to me again. Okay, so we'll counterattack again and we'll make him pay. Yep, three units charged up and hit this guy at once. And dislodged one of my... Uh, that's to be kind of expected. I, I should have put that guy on hold. Then he wouldn't have moved around. Um, the, the guy that's in my line, not the attacking units. So yeah, they're going to... These guys are going to do a lot of damage to these um, units that are in the wrong place. That manpower number just keeps just spinning. It's, it's really uh, fun to watch that number just spin and spin and spin as it takes volley after volley. And I'm going to exchange with this guy because he's standing in the water and that's it's just crazy. kind of wondering why my unit on this side of the river is um, firing so slowly. There has to be a reason why he's just... Well, we've done about all we can do here. Put a few more volleys into this guy, and um, yeah, I've gotten a little bit forward, and uh, better get out of there before his uh, reinforcements come up. Oh, his artillery made me pay for getting a little too close. So I'm moving my artillery, uh, my supply wagons. I think this is the single most important thing you need to do in Ultimate General Civil War is keep that supply wagon moving. If your units are calling for supply, that's too late. You need the supply wagons to get where they need to be um, and keep your units topped up so that they never run out of supply. When your units start firing at one-third speed, your army is going to take a lot of pointless casualties. So um, I'm moving the wagon around, and I should have enough ammo because I'm going to have two supply wagons. So without capturing any supply wagons, I should have enough ammo for the entire battle. And in here, this is, you know, I hit hold to hold it in place. I'm trying to get these units into a good location. Um... I don't think it's a good idea to have them stand on top of each other and keep firing. That that doesn't seem to be uh, the best way for them to function. They seem to lose some efficiency. Um, and, um, or, or they don't do, I, I don't know, it just doesn't, they don't do as well. So, um, but I, I keep them like this because I've, 
kind of found a pretty good uh, location for him. But he is now doing what I do. He has his units in, in, in a good position, and he has rolled up his artillery. And at this point, I'm thinking I should have bought some 20-pound parrots. 20-pound parrots would be really nice to have right now, because I could roll those guys up, and they would knock that artillery right off that hill. Uh, but I don't have any 20-pound parrots, so I didn't buy any. And I could have. I could have had uh, 12 20-pound parrots. So I'm rotating units out, which I do. I'm rotating the tired unit out and uh, putting a fresh unit in. And why is that guy calling for ammo? I have the supply wagon right there. And still trying to find the sweet spot. And, and never quite do. Never quite find the sweet spot. I am putting off the counterattack, hoping that he will extend his line further and further left so that when I counterattack, I'll really crush it. And this is the dance that your units do if you have them too close together. Um, it's a real pain in the neck, and everybody complains about it. But your unit will just keep sliding and sliding and sliding. This unit would go into the water. I mean, it would go to the most stupid places. It would go into the swamp. It would go into the water. Uh, it would... It, I mean, it's just... It's terrible. Uh, so you have to keep uh, your eye out. And, and I do. I keep an eye out. To, to just keep watching if any of my units start uh, shifting around, because that's a real problem. Not only that, but it creates a hole in your line. So, And while they're moving around, they're not firing like they're supposed to. So I'll go up and make sure that my... my quick reaction battalion up here is doing a good job. Um, and has plenty of ammo. And I'd like to deliver a blow to the enemy while there's a chance. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Yeah, notice how the units start to dance around because they're kind of trampling on each other. So I've gone across the river because his flank has really, really collapsed. And I can get some uh, easy shots on him. Particularly these four units that are kind of at the base and stuck in the water. But I'm, I'm not going to be able to get to his artillery, I don't think. That's what I'm thinking right now. I'm thinking, I don't think I'm going to make it to his artillery. Because uh, one of the things that happens is that the... The enemy units rout, and then they recover almost instantly. But this has gone really well, and if I can get a couple shots on his artillery and drive them just back a little bit, that would be that would be just perfect. And I still have condition. I just need them to fall back just a little bit. I, I don't need to kill them, I just need to just need them to get off this hill. So I, I don't want them to keep sitting there pounding my army. So what's happened now is, of course, his units have recovered because that's what they do. I have driven his artillery off this hill, and now all of his units have recovered. I'm not going to break this, this flank. Um, I have to start thinking about getting out of here. So it was successful. Drove the artillery back. That's great. But now I have to get out, and the reason that I have to get out and can't play with these guys anymore is we're about to get um, we're about to get our flank turned. He's about to turn the Union flank. So I had intended for the units that are on the other side of the river to 
be the ones to fall back to the position that I just picked, but they are, one, exhausted, and two, they're not going to be able to get out of there fast enough. So I have to take some troops that aren't quite as good and um, pull them back. That's what I'm thinking at this point. These units are a little fresher, and hopefully they have some ammo, so I'm checking. Yeah, they have ammo, they have good morale, good condition. The troops that just did this attack, they're going to need a resupply. And I'm going to... I I really need to get them out of there. They're exhausted, and we're about to have other problems. So, it's not like me to not pay attention to reserves coming in. Uh, but I did not pay attention to this. I got caught up with the other battle. But the reserves came in in not a horrible place. Um, I'm, I'm okay with this. So um, normally I would have them already in position, I think, uh, a little sooner. But I, I'm usually watching that screen in the bottom right-hand corner and I see the blue dots come in. And the enemy is already here. So I still have time. I still have time to get into position. And, and where I want to get is not to defend the flag. I'm not, I'm not interested in defending the flag. And notice how he's starting to pile up on my units. My units on the other side of the river need to get out of there. Uh, we're not going to... We're, we're not going to win this. Um, so that skirmisher is going to hold that guy up. And that infantry is already in the woods, and that's great. Yeah, now the units are exhausted and running out of ammo. So this is bad. I kept them over there way too long. Yeah, and by way too long, I mean 10 minutes in game time. Okay, and more troops are coming in. So those guys did not need to be there. See that there's kind of like a tree line? So I'm not defending the flag. I'm getting into that tree line because that's a good defensive position. And then let's see what the enemy does. Does he attack toward the uh, objective that's kind of in the middle of the screen or the final and most important objective at the end of the screen? These guys need to fall back and they're exhausted so they're not going to fall back as fast as they normally would. So that unit is definitely going to be on this front. He's not going toward the middle objective. He's going for the objective at the end. And he's attacking by himself. So that's, that's not all that bad. So I have to do a couple things. Hold this guy off that's in the middle. Uh, deal with this guy who's charging into my position. And notice I'm hitting him with cav and with... Infantry. And I even have a unit that has lost so much condition that he's um, he's about to rout. And that's bad. That guy's going to take some, some heavy hits. So if he routes in the wrong direction, this is going to be bad. Yeah, I held him over there way too long. The unit that attacked got hit with uh, infantry in good cover, although a, a not a very strong particularly unit. It was enough. So if you hit route, your units will just run at full speed. Um, that is something you can do. So sometimes having them route is not a bad thing, particularly if you need them to, uh, to really get out of there and get out of there in a hurry. So I need to get them out of there, and I need to resupply them and get ready for it, because the enemy is going to attack. So, And these guys need to get back and hold. Kind of like after Pickett's Charge. Um, battle's not over. You know, you, ha you guys need to get 
into good defensive line, because the enemy is coming. I mean, for the south. Pickett's charge for the south. Okay, we attacked, and um, then we had to fall back, and now we have to defend. So the attack actually went really well. And, uh, but now we have to defend. So now, over here, we have infantry in good positions, supported by artillery and ca dismounted cav. They should be able to fight reasonably well. And I have three, well, four and my artillery. Uh, which is my new counterattack force. Look how fast that guy moves. So everyone's going to pile on this guy. I, I love having dismounted skirmishers right behind um, a unit where they gets charged. Boy, a dismounted uh, cav unit just does a great job in that in that role. And the artillery, all piling in, and a, and a skirmisher unit. Uh, hitting from the flank. That was that was a thing of beauty. Okay, so these units are back, and uh, one unit, unfortunately the Harper's Ferries, uh, took a lot of losses. That's going to cost. But the other units are not too bad for what they've had to do so far. And now I, all I have to do is get these guys resupplied, and... Uh, And the battle goes on. I don't see how he gets across this river. But if he does, I can fall back to the next river line and, and make him pay some more. So my little counterattack into the enemy's uh, flank. The enemy attacks due south toward the victory location, and I get to hit his entire position in the flank. That, that's going better than expected. Yeah, and these tired units could never have pulled that off. They they would they could never have moved with any speed. So getting them just in a defensive line and, and letting fresh units do this was definitely the right play. His units look like they're getting a lot smaller. So the commander will have, help keep everyone's morale high. Uh, you get a real buff to uh, recovery of morale if you have the general nearby. And those guys are going to need it. The guys over here are not. They're going to inflict a lot of casualties and drive the enemy off. Their morale should stay really high. So it looks like uh, everyone's going to get resupplied. And here come these reinforcements. And I have another three-star general and another supply wagon. So when I can get these guys forward, I intend to counterattack. And uh, I'm trying to keep units out of the woods. If you run, if you walk or run units through the woods, they just get exhausted. So I'm trying to avoid that. Three on one in the open, that should go well.
and it does. His unit can't stand there and take that. And really what I'm doing with uh, these units that are a little further to the right is I'm pretty much using them just to annoy and pick at the enemy. Uh, I don't have any expe expectation that these guys are going to be able to break the uh, the uh, Confederate line. I have a hole in my line right now, and that is not good. So hopefully the commander will, will get that guy to recover, and he does. So shifting guys around. Plug the gap before the enemy can rush units through. If I hadn't noticed that, that could have been bad. And keep everybody supplied. Um, yeah, my weak little units should be able to... And I'm not running units up, because they're pretty green, so they would be exhausted if I ran them. I'm hoping to just walk them up, and the other units can, you know, do okay until my um, the rest of the reinforcements get there. Because they can't run. They're just... They don't have the condition for it. That one guy has taken way too many losses. He's down to 1,400. That means I clearly did not have him in a good position. Yeah, I was hoping to actually bring everybody up and then hit them with overwhelming numbers. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm hitting them with what I have just to see how he responds because I can get some uh, easy shots on him. And then we'll, I'm figuring we'll probably have to fall back. My units have gotten small, but I'm noticing his units are actually starting to shatter. You can see the little... little sprites um, running off the map. That's a pretty good sign that uh, that part of the army is just beaten and exhausted and um, they're pretty much done. I really want to take that artillery out, get him out of the game as fast as possible. So we can uh, take a look and see how many men he has left. He still has a sizable force. So we have to keep... Uh, it would be a huge mistake to just go after the enemy right now. Um, we can keep picking away and wiping out units and inflicting losses. That he still is large enough and fresh enough to be a substantial fighting machine. And the, the Union Army just can't charge and, and hope to just charge and win. You have to just keep grinding the enemy down. If I can take that out, that artillery out, then his entire left flank is in trouble. And I'm really surprised he didn't hold up better than he has. So now the decision is, do I concentrate against this on my right, really heavily weight the right, or is there something I can do on the left? It doesn't seem to be. Going across the river does not seem like a good idea. Uh, do I try to... I, I think I can annihilate um, his entire left, but I don't think I can annihilate this army that's on my left across the, uh, the river. All of his units are in a terrible position. And my reserves are coming up. Just in time. Yeah, his, his position is flanked. Um, 
I'm on his left, right, and center, and if he doesn't uh, fall back faster, he's going to have units, my units in, in his rear, and he's going to get hit from three sides. That is going to be a disaster. Now these green units that I'm giving orders to right now, and that, that skirmisher unit was a scout I put out way back in the beginning of the uh, battle. So uh, the units I'm giving orders to now will either be able to go right or left, and they'll be exhausted when they get there. But, but uh, the battle moved away from them so fast, uh, they have to really commit to helping out one flank or the other. And that guy is pretty fresh, so uh, we'll counterattack here and really do some damage to that unit who has uh, wandered across the river onto our side. And there is a supply wagon. And I have a cav unit right over there. Yeah, as long as I can keep his flank turned, he can't make a stand. He's going to have to keep falling back. Oh, and my uh, supply wagon is empty. That could be a problem. Yeah, I rushed uh, a unit over there to back up my unit that was getting attacked, and the attacking unit shattered. Okay, now I have this supply wagon and my regular supply wagon, and um, I need to get that over to my, my army that no longer has a supply wagon as quickly as possible. And I'm also going to send my cab over there, too, because the guys on the right, on my right, are doing just fine. They'll push these guys all the way into the corner and hopefully be able to annihilate them or come close to annihilating them. And now that that flank is secure, I'm wondering how much damage I can do to these guys. There are way too many of them to, to hope to... Uh, either break them or I, I can't annihilate them. It's, it's just there, there are too many of them and not enough time. But I can do some really good damage to them, and my objective is to take as many out as possible, inflict as many casualties as possible. So these guys on my right are going to keep retreating all the way to the edge of the board because that's what the AI does. The artillery is never going to... It did its job, but it's never going to be able to keep up. The, the enemy is just going to keep falling back. It would take so long to get to the other flank. Uh, the battle would be almost over by the time they got there. But that's probably... I should have probably sent them to the other flank. Like, I'm looking at this, and if I had a line of artillery, I think I have four artillery batteries, and if I walk them right up to the front line on my left, they might have been able to do good work, if only for a little while, because this scenario is almost over. And the way you can tell the battle is coming to an end, you, you just look at the time. Um, it's uh, 7 o'clock at night. It's 7.12 p.m., 19.12. So we're getting close to sunset. And um, this battle is just not going to go on for a whole lot longer. Well, it looks like it's going to go on for 48 minutes, which means it would end at 2000 or 8 p.m., which sounds reasonable. So I have 48 minutes, and how many guys can I get to the front line? 
Now normally these reserves, you expect them to uh, come in and defend the flag at the last minute, but we're nowhere near the flag. This is no longer about holding flags. This is about how many can I take out? Yeah, his units are getting small, but not small enough. You have to get his units down to about 400, where you can really expect to shatter him like that guy did. And he has a bunch of units that are a lot bigger than that. And I don't really have the mobile reserve that I once had, because it's over on my right flank now. Uh, whatever mobile reserve I had... And the army I'm attacking with is a little a little beaten and battered, so if I had just a little bit bigger army on this side and a little bit more time. I bet I don't mind the battle running out because it's the end of the day. You know, it gets dark. That is a perfectly reasonable thing. The sun goes down, battle's over. Um, there just isn't more time. And, okay, that's perfectly cool with that. Yeah, we're fighting this, and we don't have infinite. We're at 50% condition, uh, lost a couple of leaders, and don't exactly have a lot of troops in the attack. Um, now, over here, we have plenty of troops. All we need is time. And the problem here is the enemy is still going to, going to continue to retreat as fast as possible to get out of the way. Um, and yeah, it's proving to be completely impossible to keep the artillery in range and effective, so... But over here, I just don't have the force to take him out, and I don't have the time. There, there's, We're now down to 17 minutes, and I can't cross the water into him because I would enter into zero cover and take just tons of casualties. So, but but this this feels really good. I mean, the enemy is clearly being driven from the field. It's a historically this would have been a crushing defeat uh, to be beaten like this and pushed off the field and to take this many losses. While we're not going to be able to get him, and we're not going to be able to annihilate him, we're going to be able to inflict, I think, as many casualties as we possibly could. The mistake that I made, I think, is that my line on the left was not in the best position. I had units on top of each other. I didn't have units in 160 cover. Um... It is possible to find those sweet spots where you get max cover. I never quite found it. 
Um, I've done slightly better in this battle before when, when I did, and, uh, you know, took fewer casualties. But I, I think for inflicting losses on the enemy, I think this is just about as as good as I could have hoped. If I had another 30 minutes, well, if I had another hour, I, I'd get them all. I would, I would take them all out, and that would be sweet, but I've got, I have eight minutes, and there's just no, no way around it. You have eight minutes. It's just... I could have maybe attacked on the left a a little sooner, but I didn't really want to start that attack until I knew how the situation on the right was gonna was going to unfold. But maybe I could have gotten a few more if I had attacked on the right a little sooner, and maybe um, the troops that I sent over to reinforce my right. Maybe if I'd brought them back. Um, a little faster, and brought them all back and brought them a little faster. Uh, maybe this attack on my left, the Union, or the Confederate right, maybe would have rolled up the entire flank. Uh, but I, 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 even if I'd started 30 minutes in game time earlier, I don't think I would have wiped them out. I've watched other good players try, and it's, there's just a lot of them, and it, it's, a. Uh, it's a lot of distance to cover, and they're in really good defensive terrain, so I don't see that happening. And with Medicine of 10%, we got almost uh, 2.5 to 1, which, well, it feels like a victory, but for the campaign, that's actually not a victory. At best, that's a draw. And we got uh, a lot of Lorenzes, um, and uh, yeah. We got through Gaines's Mill, and one of the two toughest battles, I think, and the other tough battle for the North is coming up. And first we have to rebuild this army, and we can take a look at some of the numbers that we got. I expected, um, I expected my artillery, well, I don't know. Yeah, I expected my artillery to do a little better. Once again, I babied the 24-pounders. I should have had them, clo had them closer to the front. But we got more troops than we lost, which is good news, because we can refit our army completely for the next battle, which is the goal. And if we can get through those two battles, then we're in great shape going forward, because those the two hardest battles will be behind us. And the enemy force pull has come down a little bit, so we made a dent in the force pull. So even though we took some heavy knocks and... Did not get a very good kill ratio, only 2.5 to 1, which is a draw, and I'm being generous that it's a draw. Um, yeah. I dropped the numbers in there. Yeah, we're we're gonna be we're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. So let's see, do I need army organization or can I go back to medical? And, yep, medical it is, which is going to boost us up a little bit more. Oh, we were at uh, 12%. Okay, and we get some a bunch of free rifles, which is going to be great. I'm going to be able to upgrade my troops. But uh, the next battle is probably going to be costly. We're going to take some. We're going to take some unusually high losses in the next battle too, because there's a lot of open ground. And I'm going to go ahead and buy all of the officers in the officer corps. And I'm back over 500,000. So, yeah, the money just keeps pouring in. Going to have tons of cash. All 
all three of these are pretty good. I like all of them. So, I don't know, 10 pounders? Whichever perk they have will be great. Because they're 10 pounders, I'll have them be accurate. Usually my 24 pound howitzers just fire more frequently. Yeah, and in the next episode, we'll go into camp and we'll fill these guys up with uh, raw recruits and give them new weapons. Thanks.